With this, I'd now like to welcome our panelists on the stage and screen. We've got Minhas Hazarika, the Director, Digital Marketing Gamescraft. We've got Nalan Dupia, the Head of Digital Marketing, Octra In. We've got Amit Kumar, Head User Growth and Retention Hike. We've got Alok Pandey, VP Sales and Marketing, Zapadza, who's going to be the session chair. With this, I'd like to humbly welcome uh, all our eminent panelists. Alok, uh, a great discussion, I'm sure, which lies ahead, and we are really excited to know the great comments coming in from our panelists. So, Alok, without any further time delay from our side, over to you. Thank you so much, Bhavna. Thank you so much. Welcome all the panelists. Uh, I would like to welcome Minhas, Nalin, and Amit. Right, so, yes, today's topic is, you know, future of real money gaming. And uh, in, the, in the past two, three years, we have seen a tremendous phenomenal growth in this real money gaming sector, right? Uh, I mean, we can say uh, during the pandemic and post pandemic. So I would like to, you know, you know, understand the perspective from a brand market year point of view, that what all strategies are being used and can be used in the future to engage and retain customers, because retaining a customer is, is really, you know, tough in this competitive environment. So I'd like to go first with Nalin, if you can, you know, want to bring your perspective out of it. So uh, basically to retain the customers, you like everybody, we usually we have like basic strategies in place. Like we do the push notifications, SMS, emailers, calling systems, IVR systems and remarketing, right? So, but the major uh, retentions we get is basically like if your friends or something or your referrals are playing the game, right? So that's the major focus where we always focus on the referral segments, right? Where you refer to your friend and he will be onboarded. Obviously, the, the chances of you retaining on the game will be much more higher, right? So usually we focus on those kind of things. Apart from that, uh, in real money gaming, usually uh, the basic thing which again matter is a, a timely like precautions, the way users are depositing their money, whether it's safe or not, the way they are uh, withdrawing the money, whether it's fast, it's safe. So these kind of basic things which matters a lot while we retain the customers. Because the customers usually in r and look out for these basic things, right? Mm -hmm. So apart from that, if you'll see, uh, nowadays a lot of guys are actually going or a lot of the companies are actually going from the uh, branding perspective as they're where they are like dealing up with the big actors right usually that moves basic basically moves towards the user acquisition but that plays a major role in retaining a customer as well as, as your brand builds up the customers have more trust in your brand and they usually retain more on your platforms right and but above all what i would actually say is what matters the very much is like your experience the onboarding experience the gameplay experience the uninterrupted gameplay which you are offering because if that's not it is will not work right so basically you have to have a proper gameplays and which keep on evolving it's not that we have created once the gameplay it will be remain for uh, every year so every year every month you need to strategize you need to rethink over that what's new coming into the market what the customer needs are and based on those needs just update your products and then focus on the retention Rightly said, Nalin. So I would like to ask Minhas that Nalin already mentioned that, you know, the gaming, the experience of gamers, right? And the trust factor, I mean, if they are, you know, adding up the money, where the money is going, how the experience, I mean, the user experience he's talking about. Would you like to add something upon it? I mean, what all the strategies we can use to, you know, retain the customers? Yeah, uh, uh, so reason, so we have to actually, I would, I would, I would love to go, uh, uh, a few step backwards and try to answer this uh, thing question because uh, uh, retention and churn has been a say critical question for everyone who is doing say user acquisition in this space, right? So I would say my uh, that there I, I I strongly believe in there are a couple of pointers, a couple of factors that we need to look into it. So one is uh, uh, first and very critical as in how your how so, uh, social fabric is knitted closely into the game. All right, because we have seen we have seen multiplayer games has more say around the five or uh, around the five to six x larger or so more time spent time spends than single player games. So that's the social fabric how it's closely is closely is dated to the game. That's the one part of it. And the second part of the pricing one. Then if you are if you are if you want to if you want to say retain users, maybe say the user may may the user may win or lose right so keeping a such a kind of a price and say uh, a micro micro pricing in terms of the three rupees you you, you come into a game a play a game of the ludo or maybe say uh, 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 
pool or something like that, starting at rupees three or a rupees five, right? right. So the user keeps on keeps on continuing with the same game. Actually, the pricing is obviously is one of the important factor. And another another strong point is say is that how do we so in order to retain a user for a longer period of time, how do we can create a sense of belongingness in the game? As in, if I talk about sense of belongingness, then it would mean say uh, what regional flavors, what are the regional flavors that I'm putting into the game, right? Uh, suppose for example in India, so if you have to one of the popular uh, 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 casual game is Ludo. The thing is Ludo basically. Ludo is something like it's like people have gone crazy and the way they have if you if you if you if you look at china right out of the 20 games that have developed so out of 14 out of 20 games they are locally de developed which has the regional flavors to it so the people can connect to it mahajong for example taking mahajong or something else basically it's like mostly i would say more regional flavored so in india this is something obviously we have to given a survey in the back in some some weeks back that i in some report i read about Right. So people are interested to try out games which has an Indian flavor to it, mythological, uh, uh, this characters or Indian themes. So another point which goes uh, what uh, my uh, uh, colleague uh, Nalin has said, right? So creating a very say safe ground for the players to come on board, deposit and play. You you call it as fair play or you call it as say anything anything which would provide a safer environment in terms of gameplay and experience for the user um, definitely definitely the user would stick to that particular brand or to part, uh, to that particular game for a longer period of time for sure right uh, thanks minhas i mean amit you i mean has mentioned you know the regional essence in the gaming right which i so i'll pick up the cue from there where minhas uh, dropped so amit i mean do you really believe that you know regional essence along with this you know the user experience uh, will you know help us to retain the customers in this competitive environment for them? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. I will agree with the 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 point. All the points are mentioned by Minas and uh, uh, Nalin. So I'll I'll cover that too. I mean, in, uh, so I will I mean explain the main three thing that we need to kind of uh, keep in mind while uh, let's say creating strategy uh, for user retention. First of all, I mean, it start like uh, Nalin mentioned, it start from the uh, day first, I mean, uh, from the onboarding, right? So it depends on what sort of, uh, I mean, uh, seamless onboarding that you are providing to users, right? So, uh, I mean, uh, first thing, let's say one is like you may, I mean, ensure, okay, so the great onboarding is there, like post that you need to ensure, okay, so you need to keep monitoring the user behavior within the game, post onboarding process, how their behavior is, what sort of a game that they are playing? What sort of a, let's say, blocker that they are facing within the game? If there are any, you need to kind of work with the closely with your product team to kind of enhance that thing. Another thing is, let's say, if you need to keep uh, monitoring users, uh, let's say, move within the game. Let's say, giving an example. I mean, so we have a call break, right? You need to keep monitoring. I mean, so what sort of a move that people are uh, taking uh, in the game? And uh, let's say if you are seeing that a particular user is taking a wrong move again and again, provide the input to the, to the user to ensure, okay, so they are not taking these, these kind of move uh, in future, because if they, they will keep taking that sort of a move, it will, it will impact, I mean, so the, the higher chance that user will get churn out, right? So one is it, I mean, continuously monitoring users funnel within the, uh, I mean, users funnel within the product and uh, I mean, keep uh, sharing input. Next is, uh, I mean, so see people, I mean, when the people download game, they come for, let's say some entertainment. So you need to ensure, I mean, what sort of, a, sort of a entertainment that user are getting from it. Let's say if there is a Ludo, if there's a normal game that is happening again and again, you, I mean, people get bored at one point of time, right? You need to ensure what sort of, a, I mean, let's say uh, entertaining thing that they are getting, let's say being at, let's say some sort of a feature. Are you adding some sort of a feature within the game? B is let's say, uh, is there any sort of a customized, uh, let's say leaderboard happening uh, so that user engage within the game and they will keep playing. Uh, similarly, let's say, is there any uh, custom sort of a tournament is uh, there for user to kind of come and play again and again. So these sort of a thing that you need to keep uh, introducing within your game to keep the right. user engaged with your game, right? And the right. last thing is a personalization part that uh, mentioned by uh, 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 Minas. Like you need to kind of uh, think about the user uh, on personalization, being at, let's say, within the uh, communication that you are sending out to user, or let's say, what sort of a communication that user is seeing within the product. So personalization is most important thing. 
I mean, let's say start from let's say what sort of experience that user is seeing on a game to let's say what sort of uh, communication that they are getting even the out of the product also. So yeah. Yes. So I mean, uh, yes. I mean, there is multiple strategies we can use. I mean, uh, from the band uh, market year perspective, like the you know uh, regional essence along with the you know uh, user funnel with the essence of entertainment. I mean, what you guys have already mentioned. Now, so jumping on the. Uh, innovation and technological advancement because these are the factors that are playing a significant role in creating this gaming uh, ecosystem and with the gaming sector being one of the you know uh, fastest growing sectors and uh, we have seen that it has outpaced many uh, spaces in this particular ecosystem so uh, how will you know metaverse affect this uh, real money gaming and uh, do you guys really think that this uh, the parallel digital life will enhance the gameplay. So I, I would like to, you know, go first with Minhas, your uh, point of view uh, around this metaverse effect. On... Yes, uh, Alok, I was, I was, I was expecting this question to come in because metaverse being there all over the buzzword the, in the internet. Yeah, being the buzzword, I would say. So yeah, uh, definitely, I would say right because the metaverse, if I have to say, is not just like a uh, Pandora box, right? It's a uh, um, so. Still, in a nascent stage, right? This entire space is quite promising. And say, for example, right? Any any of the game to success, right? So any of the game to succeed in the market, right? Uh, social element or social layering has to be there, right? Now, kind of as you you think of you think of a metaverse, right? If you're talking about from a gaming brand and a metaverse, think of as a putting a five year old kid into a chocolate factory, right? So it's like immense, right? The, the opportunities in terms of say, in terms of in terms of say, opportunities and the, the the flexibilities and the kind of say ecosystem they a particular game needs to succeed, right? Is every everything is there, right? We say with a play to earn kind of things coming to the picture with a smart contract with a micro uh, transactions. Now the real money game, I'm I'm pretty sure we'll see a definitely a a, a very a, a, a huge change in 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 years to come actually, and it's it's not about it's not about limiting yourself to one game in the metaverse world, right? It's a, it's about how you you can you are taking a part as in so once you are you are you're playing a game, right? And you are taking a part of it with you, right? With non fungible tokens and stuff, right? So. You are taking a part out of the game, and which you can use in another another pit stop within um, metaverse. So this is like we we, we are we are exploring a, a total different realm. I would say uh, due to be a total different realm for say uh, real money gaming for years to come for sure. Okay, so uh, I mean uh, Nalin, I mean. How the metaverse will affect the real money gaming? We were discussing about the Minhas. So Minhas is very much excited about it, you know, because uh, uh, how you think this metaverse is going to change? So basically, to understand metaverse, what is metaverse? Metaverse is basically like the uh, a parallel world altogether, right? Mm -hmm. So if you see about gaming, a kind of social elements are already present into the gaming, right? Like, and if you'll change shooting games or even in some games like poker, even in our game like Octo Poker. We have avatars. We have uh, uh, already have the skins available, right? So in metaverse, what is there that these elements are already there? What we are looking out for to convert these things into the NFTs, the non fungible tokens, right? The only thing is with the non non fungible tokens is like they need to be unique, right? They they cannot be copied or they cannot be transferred to anywhere else, like bitcoins and all those things, right? Mm -hmm. So this is something where everyone is right now looking out for how to convert or these how to create these NFTs. And when you are working in the metaverse, it's always essential that once you own the NFT, because you need to own the NFT, and unlike cryptocurrency or something, you, uh, any user or any player has to own the NFT. So once the NFT is being owned, uh, how much and how they can carry those NFT into the other games or other worlds, is there limitations to the single game? It, it can be used only to the uh, only one game where they have purchased that NFT with the cryptos, right? Again, uh, the metaverse always opens a room for other payment methods like cryptos and everything else, right? Right now, uh, we have even heard that few guys have actually, uh, the co -found, Twitter co-founder co has actually converted his tweet into NFTs and guys have actually purchased that, right? So these are some things you can physically convert anything to the NFTs when it comes to metaverse, 
right? And and can sell sell uh, and can sell it out in terms of crypto, maybe in terms of gameplay, maybe in terms of time you are spending on the platform. There are multiple ways. So now everyone is moving towards play to games uh, kind of thing, play to earn kind of games, and 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 obviously the real money is no different. So in real money again. Uh, if we look out for the futures, if we create avatars, if we create certain NFTs, then it opens a way for our crypto investors. It opens a way for the gamers to earn money out of the games even a lot more. And yeah, it's a whole new world. It opens a whole new world. So, wow, fantastic. Yeah. Yes. So, Amit, I mean, uh, as Nalin and Minhas has already mentioned, right, uh, they are seeing a lot of, uh, you know, uh, gameplays and enhancement in the RMG with Metaverse. Not talking about the nitty gritty and technologically, since we all are the brand marketers and from the marketing perspective, how you think it's uh, going to help us in getting more, uh, uh, you know, entertainment centric uh, RNG. Okay, so see, like uh, Nalin and Minaj mentioned the importance of metaverse and especially in gaming. So we know, I mean, this is the new world, right? So uh, the new world in, uh, of internet, right? So, so uh, and then the, the beauty of metaverse is is it enables us to kind of uh, use the the collectibles things like uh, NFTs and other thing, right? So and at Hike, uh, I think uh, in this month only we launched our first NFT to attract the users. So uh, this is called uh, I mean Rush of Tar that we launched as an NFT and uh, let's say as a user asset for a, a user identity for our uh, let's say Rush users. Where I mean, uh, I mean, we have a different sort of I mean uh, 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 layers in this Rush uh, Avatar uh, that people can can uh, let's say leverage it uh, during the gameplay, and uh, uh, the, how this is to answer your question, how this is uh, helping us to we even we have already seen the good uh, move in terms of uh, I mean attracting the new users to kind of come and try the uh, games. So yeah, that is helping us a lot. Uh, I mean, in terms of a, I mean, uh, retaining the user and then attracting the new set of a user uh, to come on board and try out. Fine. So uh, yes, I do agree. I mean, the Nalin Minhas and Amit uh, uh, regarding this metaverse and it's going to enhance the gameplay. Obviously, uh, let's hope for it. Right, and how soon we are going to see the this metaverse effect on our RMG ecosystem, especially in India. So now coming to this, uh, uh, you know, uh, competitive RMG uh, ecosystem, which we have seen in the past two, three years, this is the biggest challenge, I guess, from a brand perspective or brand market here, you know, to uh, cater the consumer needs, which keeps on changing, uh, you know, because sensations keeps on coming, you know, within a fortnight, you, you can expect, you know, the new uh, technological advancement or new games coming up every month. So how are game owners are going to cater the consumer needs in this fast moving competitive market, right? I would like to start with uh, Amit to, you know, uh, I would love to know your perspective that how uh, the game owners is con uh, catering to the needs, I mean, the fast moving needs. Okay, uh, so again, I'll give an example of uh, our organization. So we always uh, keep user at a center while developing any sort of a feature, uh, let's say uh, future needs. So we always focus, I mean, the what sort of a need that user has. And we always keep in mind, I mean, so uh, let's say what sort of a future need can be for a user. So uh, while developing any, any, any kind of a new feature, we keep the, uh, the user need in place and we do, um, I mean, regular uh, research around the, are the users, okay, what sort of a uh, new thing that they are exploring and then uh, kind of try to kind of build some feature around that and uh, always doing a regular sort of a research around how they are liking it, what sort of a new thing that we, they want to kind of see in the pro, uh, product. And always, uh, I mean, whenever we, we reach out to our product team, we come up with the, the list of things that pe a people, uh, I mean, our existing user is already consuming and what sort of a they ask that they want to see in the product. And yeah, so we, uh, uh, we discuss with the product uh, team and ensure that uh, those sort of, uh, uh, the requirement uh, get catered within the product. So, yeah. Yes. So, Minhas, don't you think, I mean, this is the uh, very challenging, uh, you know, uh, in the recent scenario, you know, to cater your consumer needs because they, they keep on jumping because they do have multiple options in the market, right? And to retain a customer is uh, really, really tough uh, from a, a brand uh, market point of view. So, what do you think? I mean, how do you... Uh, cater the needs of the consumer which keeps on changing because they do have multiple options in the market 
So this uh, problem is going to stay actually, right? Given the growth uh, trajectory that we are in, say from $1.8 billion to say around $6 billion, whatever by 24, 25. Mm -hmm. So this problem is going to stay for sure. Now, uh, the thing is consider uh, the, the churn or the player fatigue is very high in casual and hyper casual kind of a game segment, all right? And uh, this is a, uh, this is because it's like, this is because the games within the casual and hyper casual category are very repetitive, right? It, it, it depends upon the user, right? Uh, the, why the user is coming onto a particular, say, hyper casual or casual game to try out his uh, uh, skill, basically. So generally, generally, it says key, okay, if it's if it's there to say uh, this thing, socialize, or if it's there to seek thrill, basically, right? Now, if the user or the player keeps on repeating or doing the similar task or similar steps within the game itself, there's a high chances that the user will churn for sure, right? So now, so this is very, uh, so this is, uh, the thing is, so that's that's the reason. So in India, in India, the arm. If you if you talk about RMG as a space, right? So card games has been there for some time now, and fantasy sport has done. I would say more than enough, more than more than decent work in the last couple of years, right? Now going forward is the time for casual and hyper casual kind of a segment, which 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 says it would grow by another say thirty percent by two zero two four and two zero two five. Now, keeping a sense, keeping an understanding with the user as to what kind of what kind of game they're interested in, say within the game, it's totally dependent upon how you are uh, making their gameplays or not. I would say gameplays, but the kind of time they're spending on that particular game as in longer. Right. Mm -hmm. If you're able to succeed to do that, right, the user not only it will stick to you, not the user will stick to that particular game, not to the bird brand, but also it will give you enough long window to monetize that user, put the user as well as the game, basically. Right. So, yeah. So that is that is something that is something uh, that is something would happen. And uh, like what I have said in my previous uh, 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 answer, the thing is, uh, we need to build games which uh, which has regional flavors to it, regional flavors to it, people can easily connect to it. Actually. Okay. Okay. So uh, Nalin, I mean, uh, what Amit and uh, Minhas has already mentioned, right? That to retain a customer, it is uh, a challenge. For, uh, from a brand perspective, right? So user experience is one which we need to improve to retain the customers. But how do you think, because you know, they do have multiple options in the market, right? And uh, also keep coming with new technological advancement with new features. So what are your uh, thoughts on it? How to retain yeah. customers? So, so we, we have heard one line from a long, right? Change is the only constant. So everything needs to be updated with time. So so do the games, right? So that's, that's, the, that's actually the fact, right? So now, uh, how we can do that actually? So if if we are seeing that the game is changing, the market is changing. So here the game, your game community and your customer support actually plays a major role to let you understand what actually your customer needs are, what they are looking out to, why, if there are a certain customers we are which are with you from a longer, longer time, now they are not playing your game, then you need to first know that why they are not playing. What are the other games offering? What, 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 what actually they are looking out for? These are the basic understandings once you have from the uh, consumer's perspective, right? You can then improve your game that what are the things which, are, uh, which need to be added into the game, right? So, okay. so again, it comes to the same thing, same question again, how to retain the customers. Because, right, because change, the key, things will come, come up, right? New games will be there. New sensations will come around every day. Right? It's just that what is the best thing you can take out of from these new things, which is not already there in your game, implement that so that your customers can actually get the same thing within your games as well, right? So these are the basic things uh, which uh, you need to do while uh, uh, you need to retain your customers or like cater your customer needs. Okay. So uh, while talking about the technology, since we are running out of time, so we uh, need to, you know, uh, be quick on this because I, I personally uh, was uh, very much interested to understand the, uh, you know, importance of AI in RMG, right? So artificial intelligence. So what do you guys think? I mean, how it has improved uh, uh, since 2019 and what the future is going to be uh, of RMG with AI, right? So I would love to uh, understand the perspective of uh, Nalin first, that how is AI in RMG improved since 2019 and what can we expect in 2022 and beyond, right, in the real money gaming sector? 
एक्सपीरियंस so whatever user inputs are what they are playing how they are playing which particular game they like which kind of purchases usually they made right these everything goes into ais and based on those you offer certain things you offer them you show them certain thing pop ups so these are all ui builds apart from that uh, to retain the customers there is a proper match making right the ai helps you in always in the proper match making how the match making is happening into your game right so there's again comes into the ai's component so ai helps you out in all those things Right. That's and great. in future, obviously, the I am assuming that chatbots and the support services will again go into the AI system where they can actually understand previous needs of the customers and can enhance the chatbots accordingly with the AI. Right. right. So, uh, I mean, Minhas and Amit, since we are running out of time, so I just want to you know wrap up the session with a quick note that yes, RMG, we are seeing a lot of growth in the coming future. right and uh, you know the, being the biggest revenue generator and you know advertising spender we can see a lot of growth in this sector and uh, uh, thanks for coming amit thanks for giving your time on a friday evening right thank you so much amit nalin and minhaj uh, that's all uh, i'll ask bhavna thank you so much alok you know i was really intrigued with with the entire discussion and you know we were just having a conversation in the back end that we are so privileged and honored to have all our eminent speakers because every uh, you know uh, topic is giving us a great insight into something which could become a uh, huge and which is of course already huge uh, in the industry kudos to all the men leading it from the front and we wish you all the very best and we thank hope you. to see you in further conversations ahead thank you so much thank you so much so thank, thank you, you. Thank, thank you, you. Yeah. thank you for your valuable time